Hello everybody, it's Dr. Zeno with Whitney Zeno for 15 Minute Fuel, which is in 15 minutes a day. We'll free your mind, body, and, and your, your future. future. Very good, we try to stir it. <laughs> Alright, so uh, today is Family Friday. We have the return of Whitney Zeno, everybody. Hey, I'm back. She's back. <laughs> it fit her schedule perfectly. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so it's aligned. yes, we we were traveling, and you know when you're traveling with, uh, I was doing these 15 minute fuels, and when he was taking care of the um, our kids, the crazy, yeah, the crazy. <laughs> well, we don't want to speak that okay. again, but well, they're crazy they in a are, good way. They're, they're, yes, they're, they're, they have energy. Okay. So. so, all right. So today we're going to be talking about. I'm going to talk about the three lies of motherhood, or at least these are the three lies that I'm going to talk about today. So um, I did a post a couple days ago just Thank asking. Oh, yeah, go. So quick announcement real quick. <laughs> episode 36. <laughs> episode 36 is live, so you'll see the link pop there. So make sure you check out um, episode 36. Why is this all I don't know, cray funny. cray? Weird so. Uh, so episode 36 is live, so make sure you check that out. Awesome. Uh, thank you for going to IamHero.com. All right, there, that was work. Very good. Uh, go to IamHero.com, because I already, and so sign up for your one month's uh, winning. That's amazing. You guys have been doing that. And uh, all social media, you know, just stuff. Like it, share it, love it. Yep. And... Do you need to change something? No, I'm good. We'll just okay. do that. Oh, it keeps switching. Okay, so I did a post a couple days ago, and I just, I was writing out the stuff, and... I was just thinking about like the lies of motherhood that all women kind of deal with and that a lot of times we don't talk about. And so I just, I, I normally, you know, anyway, I post on Facebook. I, I just ask the question, you know, what lies have you believed in the past about motherhood or are you believing now? Are you dealing with? And I got so many responses. I got so many responses. And at first, like the first couple of responses were kind of funny and lighthearted. And then like people really started sharing some like deep things about, that they were dealing with, you know? So so I figured that was some good, that was good stuff to talk about. And I know we have a lot of moms on the show, so I know that that's, you know, a need that we all need to um, talk about and bring, you know, just a conversation around that, around that situation that motherhood isn't perfect and we're not perfect. Anyway, so I'm gonna kind of, you know, bust some uh, lies today, so. <laughs> <laughs> bust some myths bust some. <laughs> or bring it up so anyway so the things that I'm going to talk about are little counterintuitives to what we've been taught as usual we seem to always say that because we that is you know we're a little counterintuitive to what you know we've been taught through society and etc so um, my thoughts may give you kind of a gut check if they do then just you know don't don't automatically reject what I'm saying. Just say, oh, I feel kind of uh, weird about that. Let me, you know, discover what that feeling is or why I'm feeling that way. And then just spend some time, you know, thinking about it afterwards. So, um, so our oldest son, Justice, is 10. And like, as soon as I got pregnant with him, like this, this inner, you know, not despair, but this inner, you know, disdain started of, okay, am I going to stay home? Am I going to work? You know, what am I going to do? What is our family going to look like? And um, I did, you know, I decided to stay home. So I, I was home with him most of the time and I did a lot of things from home. I worked from home and took care of all the, you know, back end business stuff. And I would go into the office very minimal. Um, but, you know, there was a huge disconnect between us because now we used to do everything together. We worked out together. We ate breakfast together. We worked together all day long. And, um, and we enjoyed that. But then whenever we had justice that changed and then all of a sudden I was at home by myself all day long with a baby and he was at work with people all day long and then we would come together and there was there was a there was a disconnect for yeah, and because the big disconnect I guess to say because you would even say I would go to work and I would have the hi Dr. Zeno thank you Dr. Zeno you're amazing Dr. Zeno we appreciate you Dr. Zeno Thank you for being my life, Dr. Zeno. So I got my certain human needs were being met, right? I was yeah, good. Yeah. Well, in fact, and this was actually the very dysfunctional thing about the practice that led to actually torment for me later on was because the practice I thought fulfilled all my human needs, love, contribution, growth, certainty, uncertainty, and there's one more, like connection and stuff like that. So I was getting all that from there. So when I come home, my tank is full. Yeah. But then Whitney... And obviously, you mothers out there know yeah. that your tank is, like, empty after a long day of being right. with the kids. You're like, what is going on? Like, I need a break. 
you know, all this, all this stuff. So he would come home and I would want to do something or go out with friends and you would want to, or not friends, but you know, I'd want to do something right. social. Right, the opposite. Like, yeah, and then he wanted to just be quiet, you know, so yeah. anyway, and that happens for a lot of families that have like, stay, you know, full-time stay-at-home mom. So, so anyway, so then, you know, over the years, so this has just been a huge struggle going back and forth of figuring out, okay, what's the balance for our family look like? How much am I going to be in the office? How much am I going to be at home? And it has changed so much, mm -hmm. right? Like I just go through different seasons and, and I just give myself permission and you do too, to just decide what feels good at the right time. So, um, so this has been a big theme over that. So we have to figure out, you know, what's right for our family. And you have to figure that out too. Like what is right for your family? It's not going to look exactly like ours or like your parents or his parents or your neighbor. So you have to figure out what's right for your family at that time and then go from go from there and be okay with that. Give yourself permission to do that. So, uh, so the lie number one. So this is the lie number one that mothers are to sacrifice their lives for their families, okay? So now don't get me wrong, like a huge part of our lives are devoted to, you know, giving time and energy and love to our families. However, we're not supposed to sacrifice our lives to families. You know, that's not like, you know, if you are a Christian, like we sacrifice our lives to God. That's what we're called to sacrifice. We're called to, you know, give our lives to our divine destiny and to our divine purpose and to God and what his, his will and plan is for our life. So it's not for, um, it's not for our families. It's for, it's for that calling and that purpose. I mean, what's the one question that everybody asked, ask in their life? Yeah. This isn't a trick question. <laughs> Everyone wants to know, what is my purpose? Like, what am I on this earth to do? What am I called for? And really, like, I remember a long time ago, we heard a pastor say, you know, women, your calling is not motherhood. And I was in, like, the early years of motherhood, and I was like, oh, my God, yes, it is. Like, I felt like that was my calling, you know? It's like that... I, and I was like offended at that. I was like, oh my gosh, yes it is. Like that's my calling and my calling is to support my husband and to raise my kids. And for a long time, like I, that's where I lived. And that was, that's, that is not my, that's not the full expression of my purpose. You know, that is part of our, that's part of what we do and that's part of what we're called to do, but that's not the full expression of it. So, so sacrifice is really an inappropriate word to use. So what is my purpose? What was I born here to do? So we are to sacrifice to the will of God, not to a certain group or, or people. We're not to lay down our lives for our family. They are not our master. So we have to remember that. So don't constantly sacrifice your life and, and what you have, have been called to do for your family and keep that in balance. Like we're not going to also reject our family either. Just go there, you babe. Know? Stay there. Stay no, there. no, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying, like, I'm yeah. not saying, I'm not trying to be family hating or man hating, you <laughs> know, like I'm saying there's, there's, you have to put that in perspective and do the right balance. That's right, right. for you. No, I totally believe it. Well, what, what, what he's, of course, what he's trying to say is, you know, some moms and you no know, today, even some dads, they feel that, well, you know, I have, to, I am the last one, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm the last one and everybody has to go first. And then, that's almost sometimes the, the excuse why they don't take care of themselves yes. mm -hmm. or that's why, you know, things are going that way and they have to, they take no, you know, they, they, they give up the esteem and mm -hmm. the importance and yeah. all this other stuff yeah. to other people. So it just lowers self-worth and stuff like that when their, their dream and their hero is still there. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, you know, active motherhood roughly takes about 20 years. For some people more, if you're having kids more spread out, <laughs> or if you're having, you know, a I lot of kids. Justice is 30 and still sleeps in your No, way. no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, and this yeah. is our responsibility nice. to let them go. So the whole 20 years of life is preparing them to leave and be amazing adults, to make an impression on the world. Um, so, you know, I re always remind myself and I talk to my sisters a lot about this. Like I am raising men. Like that's my purpose. I am raising men. That's my purpose for my, for my kids. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, I'm, I'm just thinking about 1030 at night and they're like, yeah. <laughs> they're definitely not, not men. screaming. Ah. <laughs> they're definitely not, but they're getting there. We're, they're we're they're not men yet. We are raising them to be men. You just said it and I just, <laughs> and I just laugh. I, I, no, but I get it. You totally are. You totally are. And I do appreciate that. Yeah, and then that's what you guys are doing as well. Like you're raising men and women to fulfill their divine destiny and purpose and bring their gifts and talents to the world. Like that's what that's what we are. That's our purpose in in motherhood. And um, so that's our that is our job right now. So 
So what better way to teach them to do this than to do that ourselves? So we have to be the example. Our kids aren't going to know how to do that unless they are seeing us do that. So um, so lie number two, okay? Um, and you can make little mm-hmm. comments down there so I can know, you know, are you, am I doing what? Oh, you're beating me. Oh, my Facebook Live is beating you. Boom. <laughs> um, so, uh, raising someone's future husband. Yeah, that's good. So, also, like, someone's future husband, but but also, what, what other gifts and talents does she have to serve the world? Because, honestly, like, this is, this is not to be rude to you at all, but being your husband isn't the only thing that I want to do in life, right? No, like, just your, like, no, being, being my wife. Oh, just like being your husband isn't the, like... What if your only thing was to be my husband? Well, it's called codependence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So it's like, yes, we want to raise them to be good partners in life, but also we have other gifts and talents to bring to the world. So number two lie that I brought up, and there was a lot. Like people listed a lot of lies the other day. And this is just I just picked like top three that I thought were important. So lie number two: we are to control every aspect of our child's being and of our child's future. Okay. So the easiest way not to do this is actually to have a life of your own. So if you have a life of your own and you are pursuing your own dreams and and developing your talents and your gifts. If you're doing all this, then you're not going to have enough, you're not going to have time to like nitpick at every single little thing that your kids do. Because I don't think I don't think that that's I don't know I don't think that's healthy. And um, so uh, so when your kids seeing you doing this, they will learn how to do this as well. Of course, we also do spend time cultivating our child's gifts and talents. It's not I'm not talking about you know, letting go of your kids and not ever paying any attention to them. I definitely am not that kind of parent and I don't agree with that, but there has to be, you know, there has to be time whenever you're working on yourself and time when you're working on your kids, time when you're working, you know, there's all these different um, time allotments. So remember whenever Justice saw you speak at Cal Jam mm-hmm. a couple of years ago and I remember I, I was sitting right by, by him and actually Mick was too and you could just see like he was sitting on the edge of his seat and he was just staring at you in awe and he just like he literally said he was like six he was like that changed my life <laughs> and I was like how could that change his you know how would that change a kid's life but it was by seeing you you know, you practice and you perfected your talk and he saw you working up to that. He saw you getting nervous in the room and then he saw you perform and lead people and influence people. And that's what inspired him. And like, and now he says, he's like, I want to be a speaker, you know, like he, yeah, yeah. So he's, he's perfecting that talent. And then you are taking the time to help him develop that by doing, doing the fuels and practicing and so that is, uh, so that's like the greatest example is whenever, you know, we're not, the only thing we're doing is not spending time on our kids trying to make them into the people we think they should be. So I don't want a bunch of little mini Chris's and little mini, well, definitely there's not going to be any mini Whitney's except, in the, well, except in the form of Titus. He tries to be, but, um, but we don't want a bunch of little mini kids. Gotcha. We want like authentic. We want our kids to be authentically them. Yes, we want them to be yes. their own unique heroes. Yeah. That's what it is, right? <laughs> because then what happens if I, if we force them or we say it has to, it has to be our way, then they're going to be raised with limited belief systems that we have. Mm-hmm. And I don't want them to have the same limited belief systems that held me back. You know, so it's part of, so sometimes when they want to say something, I want to I want to go into parent mode or I want to go into my mom mode because I said so this and that and I hold mm-hmm. back because I'm like ah you know because because I don't <laughs> so even know why why because yeah. I said so why because my mom said so yeah mm-hmm. and just allow them to you know Dr. Gentempo said something really great he goes children come through you not for you yeah. follow me they come through so you to the world so God used you and I right mm-hmm. to birth these spirits mm-hmm. into a physical body, right? You yeah. got together and that whole thing happened. You built the suit. And uh, so they came through us, but they're not on this earth for us. Correct. Right? Yes, absolutely. I like that. That is so good. Write that down. It's here. <laughs> so, so the number three lie is that, that a lot of mothers 
fall prey to and I did for years and years and years and um, it's that we are selfish if we work outside the home or if we take any time for ourselves for our internal or our external beauty or if we even we're selfish if we take time to have fun you know I mean how many moms like actually take the time to take a trip or take a weekend trip with your spouse or go have lunch with um, your family or your friends you know without feeling guilty and I did this forever I went from being a personal trainer and working out twice yeah. a day every day to whenever I had justice I never worked out because I felt so bad to leave him with anyone besides like our moms and they didn't even live in town so it's like basically every month I would like take the time to go do something get my hair done or something and then other than that like I just felt so bad to leave them with anyone so then I felt sluggish and I felt bad about myself because I wasn't working out or I wasn't doing anything and um, for me or to you know do personal development or things like that and then once I started doing things like that then I felt better about myself and I became a better mom and became okay. I became a better mom I became a better wife I became a better employee at the office and, and have more to give to people around me and then the other thing that um, that I realized about this whole thing, because I would not, I didn't, I hated leaving my kids with anybody except for like some, per, you know, this perfect person. And what I realized is that having other people in our kids' lives is, it, having other keep people in our kids' lives is a risk because you're always worried about, oh, what's this person going to say or what's this person going to do? We all have fears like that. Um, however, it actually enriches your children's lives, and I really realized that like last week. And like I've always kind of thought that in the back of my mind, but I never really put it into words. Like it enriches our kids' lives whenever we have them around other people. Like they don't only need us; they do need other people. It's that whole village thing, you know. It's like we do want our kids to be around different cultures and different types of people, so they can learn about the world, and they're not in this bubble which we've definitely been guilty of is trying to keep our kids in this little tiny bubble and only you know only learn about the things that, that we believe in and that we you know instead of exposing them to things and that brings up conversations that we can actually talk about whenever they're younger so I really I really appreciate that about all the people that we have in our kids lives right now um, because they're able to experience and learn other things through different people instead of just us and then that's going to also you know, help bring other other gifts or interest up that we that they wouldn't get from us. Absolutely, I totally agree. So, if you guys like that so far, just uh, do the hearts and hit that share button right there to show Whitney some love. <laughs> Give me some hearts, okay? And then no also, knows. like angry faces, no angry faces. <laughs> So, you know, just don't get caught up in that one aspect of yourself. I know it does require a lot and it does take a lot of time and emotional energy and physical energy to be a mother, but take the time for yourself to, um, you know, to kind of discover what your gifts and talents are and take time to, you know, do things for yourself and um, cultivate those gifts and talents and then that's going to be beneficial to your kids as well so if you need to kind of put that spin on it that it's going to be a good thing for your kids and a good thing for your husband and um, then that's good as well so um, so motherhood I love this quote it's motherhood is what unites us as women and our special gifts and talents are what make us a unique so that's what sets us apart so our unique gifts and talents are what we are called to give to the world. And that's how we're going to make the world a better place. So. Yeah, I love it. I made that quote up. Good job, really? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Well, did you write that down? Is yeah, that it's written down, yeah. Shirt. If you guys want a shirt of <laughs> that, we'll make you guys That's a long one. shirt. No, it's a great so, yeah, one. So listen, so just do that. And remember, it comes to that hero mindset. And, and it's just like, you know, that, you know, I know you, you get so scared of even being considered selfish prideful ego or uh, you know that, that those three words that yeah, so you actually ones. swing the pendulum the other way to a false humility and actually you try to do things not to appear you go out of your way not to yeah, martyr, martyr yes yourself. and it, it definitely destroys because what happens is when you're when your identity is not of just your children or other people then you lose your own identity and it's it's literally the ultimate it's like shaking your fist at God saying why didn't you make me like somebody else and it's something where you're true innate genius doesn't have a chance to yeah. glow and shine the way it always was. You know, I love that Marion Wilson quote, you know, like, who are we not to be gorgeous and beautiful and all mm -hmm. these other things? Yeah. You know? So 
Um, and I know it's tough. I know it's tough to just start saying, you know, I am beautiful. I am worthy. Mm -hmm. You know, I can, I, I can enjoy my beauty and prettiness mm -hmm. and, and feel sexy. Still, you know, all these yeah. other things. And I think it's, it's just a wonderful, beautiful thing to be able to do. But it really starts with you. You know, you have to give yourself yeah. permission to do so. Absolutely. You know, because you can't, you know, and hopefully we're much better at that. that remember, it's like, you know, your happiness doesn't have to come from me. You know, it's mm -hmm. this inner thing. So the, yeah. your inner beauty, all that is giving yourself permission to do so and feeling good about it. Uh, there's no sin in that. And yeah. the people look down upon you when you do that. It's because you're reflecting something that they would really like to do as well. Mm -hmm. They want to do that, but they just haven't been able to give themselves permission yet. So shine so you can help liberate others and do the same thing. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And then next yeah. week I'll go over like three steps of how to do this, how to like overcome these lies. Nice. So. All right. So make sure that'll be next Friday. Mm -hmm. Right. So thank you guys so much for watching 15 Minute Fuel. And uh, tell me, uh, watch episode 36, right? That's out. Check that out. Let us know how you like that. And uh, it just keeps on getting better and better. And we'll see you tomorrow. We're 15 Minute Fuel. We're just in 15 minutes a day. We're going to fuel your mind, your body, and your future. God bless. Bye. You hit that one. I'll hit this one.